Good morning, Kingsley Community. Pastor Colleen Weirman here coming to you with another daily devotion for, sounds like I'm echoing in this room, <laughs> August 26, 2024. And we're going to use Truth for Life by Alistair Beck. And this one's called The Patient Savior, Mark 4, verses 38 through 40. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, these are Jesus' disciples waking up Jesus, do you not care that we are perishing? They're on the boat. <laughs> and he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was great calm. Jesus said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? So Alistair writes, When the storm raged and the disciples feared, Jesus displayed not only peace, but also patience in his response to them. They had accused Jesus of not caring that they were perishing, <laughs> yet he's going to die for them. Yet his rebuke wasn't for them, but for the wind and the waves. That is remarkable. No teacher ever had such slow learners as Jesus had in these characters, yet no other students have ever had such a patient and forgiving teacher either. While Jesus's patience was showcased by his episode, it was by no means exclusive to, to it. Throughout his ministry, Jesus consistently displayed patience in response to his disciples, feelings and failings. In Mark 6, after Jesus fed 5,000 people, and it's not 5,000 people, it's 5,000 men, so probably more like 15,000 people. Oh no, that was Mark 6, so it might've been 5,000. From five loaves of bread and two fish, no, there was more like 15,000. The disciples doubted him when they saw Jesus walking on water. Yet Jesus lovingly replied, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Mark 6, verse 50. Later on, Jesus repeatedly instructed them as to the necessity and purpose of his death, despite their lack of humility and understanding. Once Jesus had risen, he did not even rebuke the disciples for being surprised by the resurrection he had foretold to them. Instead, he joyfully and calmly asked them thought-provoking questions and revealed his true identity to them. How many of us are patient like that? <laughs> After someone asks you three times, I don't know, but maybe me and my spouse, I already told you that. Did you, was I in another room? Was I doing the laundry? Was I making breakfast? And then when I say, I already told you that, I just go ahead and repeat it after that. <laughs> we see all our own frail faith reflected in the disciples. If we had been with them, we too probably would have been scrambling around in fear and voicing our doubts and accusations to Jesus. Yet still today, Christ shows us patience through our fears and doubts. He is no, there is no teacher like him. Therefore, as recipients of Christ's long-suffering patience, let us return such patience to others. If you are a parent, coach, manager, ministry leader, teacher, or simply a friend, remember Jesus' example. If we want God to tolerate our faltering faith, then we should also aim to demonstrate his patience to others and to ourselves. Most of all, though, we are not called to follow Jesus' example, but to enjoy his perfections. Not sure what he means there. His patience will not fail. He never neglects or des deserts those in his care. Your sins and your struggles cannot push Jesus beyond the limits of his patience or forbearance. He will be patient with you today. Jesus is your savior, your redeemer, your ever patient teacher, your Jesus. So be patient with people. Um, I know it's difficult, but you know what? There's a lot of people that um, don't get any um, any parents that are patient, especially kids that are, you know, high maintenance kids. They don't, or high energy kids, they don't get the patience sometimes at home from their parents. So teachers have to be the patient ones. And if you've seen a teacher in the classroom, they are amazing. So we're going to get uh, some of our um, teachers next week. Some, all three buildings will get a, yummy breakfast tray full of um, little mini cinnamon rolls, little brownies, some fruit, bagels, cream cheese, and also our admin and also our bus garage because you know what? They work so hard for our kids and we want to just say we love you and we thank you for taking care of our kids in this community and have a great year. So 
teachers are very patient. If you've sat in a classroom and you know, you've got one kid or two kids or whatever, they might have 28 <laughs> and yet, you know, they have to be firm, but they're also patient because they realize that sometimes these kids just don't have, you know, people that are patient with them at home. Or if they do have people that are patient with them at home, they're probably dealing with struggles like, I can't understand math, I can't do the, you know, the social studies or the science, or, you know, nobody's helping me. And so it takes a lot of work to be patient with children and also adults because you can't hold adults to any kind of, you know, you just, they're an adult. You, the only thing you can do is choose not to react to them, but respond like Jesus did, which takes a lot of prayer. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for reminding us to be patient as you are patient with us, as you were patient with your disciples who walked and talked with the living God, the living word of God, and yet they still didn't get it. So um, thank you for being patient with us and help us to pass that on to others. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, have a good day.